My name is Stacy Jones. I'll go through a few slides, and then we'll get into a demonstration. Okay, so to start it off, when we are talking about how you can achieve better software license management, I know the audience today is Footprints, so it is all in the Footprints realm. Um, a lot of you guys have Footprints Service Core, so we'll show you how to basically kick this off from an incident, but the majority of the demonstration is going to come from the Asset Core solution. So this is where we'll be doing the software license management. As well, if you've been listening to any of uh, the BMC discussions, you may have heard that the Asset Core is, be, is being renamed to Client Management. So those two terms will be uh, synonymous going forward. Now, um, at the core of any good software license management is um, an exhaustive inventory of the software that has been deployed in the environment. So what you'll see on this graphic is that that core being inventory. If you're looking at the bullets on the left, um, well, let me back up. Asset core itself, client management, has many capabilities that it can do in your environment. We're just going to focus in on the software license management. So with respect to the bullets on the left, we're going to zero in on bullets four and five. Those are the two that have to do with software compliance. Now, again, at that core is the inventory, and to get a good inventory, we do need to put an agent on those machines. Again, that is functionality that's inherent in the Asset Core console. As I advance the slide here, I'll talk about a few more aspects um, with respect to intelligent software management, and then we'll go into the demonstration. So at the core, that top bullet talks about managing my software licenses. So how do I do that? So I have to be able to see what I've actually deployed in the environment. Again, that's accomplished via the agent on the end node. I need to, in some cases, for those applications that I have deployed that are for fee, I want to see if they're actually being used. Why? Because if they're not being used, I may have deployed it to a group of people for a project, the project is over, they're no longer using it, then I can reclaim those licenses as opposed to buying additional licenses. So when we track the usage, you're going to get a better understanding of how the software is being used in the environment. The next piece would be um, entering your licenses. So you'll see when I go through the demonstration, you'll be able to enter how many licenses you've purchased for a given suite or a given application, and then um, compare that, if you will, see if you're in compliance with respect to the number of licenses that you purchased. And then the last one there talks about blocking unauthorized applications. So based upon um, the catalog, based upon scanned applications, you will be able to prohibit certain applications from running in the environment. The second bullet really is around normalization. So as a part of the software compliance, we are providing you with a software catalog. We maintain that software catalog, but basically what it's doing is normalizing any of the applications that are found in your environment. So as an example, Microsoft Office has professional, they have standard, there are applications that make up each of those suites. That information is what has been normalized for you in the software catalog. So in addition to the catalog and um, kind of outside of that would be additional applications that we have found with the discovery of your environment is what you'll have um, in your repository to enter your licenses against. And then finally, the reports. With each of the modules in Asset Core, um, there will be out-of-the-box reports. The same holds true for the software license management. I'll show a few of those, but you will also be able to um, walk through a wizard and create additional reports if the ones that are provided out of the box are not sufficient. Okay. So first what we'll do is start in the Service Core console. Again, um, as this is a Service Core audience, this screen should look familiar to you. It's the screen where your technicians are coming to resolve incidents. I'm going to scroll down here just a bit. We're able to see here all the incidents. I'm going to log into one of them, the 5254 incident. And again, here on the left is where you'll have several 
categories of information. I've landed on asset information. This is all the information that I have gleaned from Asset Core. Again, there are multiple solutions that you can tie into, but the one that has native integration is Asset Core, and these are the functions, and this is how you, or one way in which you could launch into the Asset Core console to start doing your software license management. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and launch into the console, and I'm going to take it just to the home screen. And I myself have been doing software license management or asset management for the better part of 10 years. So I've used several solutions. Uh, the one thing I like about the Asset Core console is down here at the bottom on the right, there's this concept of wizards and this instant expert. So every solution is going to do it a little bit differently, but this helps with the learning curve. So the wizard would prompt me. You'll remember at the beginning I said for that inventory, we have to know what's out there, and I'm going to need an agent to perform the exhaustive software inventory. So here you'll notice I have a wizard that lets me discover all the assets in my environment so I can walk through that process. And then I have another wizard that's going to walk me through putting the agent on the machine so I'm able to capture that detailed or that exhaustive software inventory. Now those pieces I've already done. So we don't have to walk through that, but you'll notice under the instant expert is where I could go to then do a specific task. So I may want to manage my application licenses. So what this does is now walk me again through the wizard to, um, it's basically prompting me for the information so that I can do some of those initiatives we spoke about in the PowerPoint. So what I'll do here is just go ahead and launch into this wizard. So I'm going to the top. I'm going to go into Application Management. And you'll see on the left um, many steps, not many, several steps will appear depending on what I choose on the right. So again, it's prompting me. I'm still not going to have to be an expert um, with Asset Core to walk through this. So we'll say the first one I'm going to do is automatically manage my software licenses. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit Next, and you'll notice some steps are going to pop up for me on the left. So here I've got two additional steps. Now this one, I'm going to hit this green check. So I've basically got two icons. And what this one is doing is um, looking through that software catalog that is provided to you um, out of the box. This is the catalog that um, BMC is maintaining. I'm going to go ahead and hit the arrow. And you'll see I can look by manufacturer, I can look by uh, category. Here I've just opted for the Acro software, but again, this list is quite exhaustive. We'll choose the Acro, um, actually let's choose, we're going to choose one of the Adobe products. And just by way of scrolling down, you can see it's really quite exhaustive here. So I'm going to say Adobe. And then, again, the catalog is bringing me back all the applications that are available via Adobe. Now, in my environment, I, I'm going to look at the, uh, let's say, the reader. So I can opt to get a specific version for that reader, or I can just get all of them. So we'll just opt for the utmost. I've got an Acrobat reader. I'm going to say, okay. Now it's asking me a couple of questions. Do you want to monitor this application? And how many licenses do you have? So let's say we have 1,000 as an example. Here I'm going to move from step two to step three, and I'm going to assign the devices that I want to look across. Again, we've got three icons at the top. So this is asking me who are we looking at with respect to the Adobe Acrobat that you want me to manage. I'm going to hit the Add. It's pulling up my directory structure. So here I'll just say all my active demo machines. I'm sorry, we're going to say all devices. That one's a little bit more exhaustive. I'm going to say OK. And you'll notice that it, by default it's saying that the status is unauthorized. So in other words, no one, no machine that ends up under all devices is authorized to use this particular piece of software. Okay, And then we'd hit Finish. And we're going to go ahead and go to the license software. So here now it's throwing me into um, my console, and I'm able to see all the um, pieces that I've built up. 
So there, let's look at this reader. And I'm kind of at the high level. You'll notice it's dropped me into this dashboard. The dashboards are interactive, so I can see quickly how many I've purchased. No one's authorized. I can see I have it installed. Again, just kind of mousing over this lets me see I have it installed on two machines, and I've got 98 licenses available. But because I said that was unauthorized across the environment, you can see here um, that all devices had 77 machines. They're all unauthorized. So double-clicking would throw and show me um, those 77 machines. I'm going to click, though, on the one um, that's the compliance because what this is telling me is I have 75 mach uh, machines that are compliant and two that are not. So again, here, let me go ahead and double-click. Again, these dashboards are interactive. Um, by default, it's showing me all the ones that are compliant, so we're just going to go ahead and look at all results. And I'm going to sort this. So the top two are non-compliant. So if we think back and I said no one was authorized, then this is telling me quickly those two machines must have Adobe Reader installed. So what I'm going to do is just right-click on one of these and go to that device. Here on the left, I'm into the, the laptop, the inventory, the software, and we can go ahead and look at the uh, scanned applications, and I will be able to see really quickly Adobe Reader is installed. So this machine out of compliance, and if we look again across all devices, I had two that were um, non-compliant, so at this point it's information at my fingertips. What do you want to do? Do you want me to uninstall that software, or do we need to um, perhaps get additional licenses? Okay, so here let's um, let's go back to my home screen and let's walk through some of those other options that were available in that wizard. So here I'm going back to Wizards Application Management, and now we'll do the second one. So configure a list of applications to manage. And when we say manage, I have the ability to set up a monitor, so I'm going to track the usage, a prohibit, I'm not going to allow them to run it, or the protect, which is kind of a self-healing. So I'm making sure at all times that application is available to the end user, and if it's not, it's bringing down the payload necessary to run a given application. So here we'll just choose the, uh, the monitor, um, new application list. So here you just give it a name. Um, we could even say, let's say, okay, so here we've got a name. My options there again, prohibit, monitor, or protect. Um, let's say we're going to prohibit this one. My source, two options. Again, we've talked about the catalog. Um, that's what's provided to you out of the box. I could also do a scanned application. So I'm going to opt for that. So essentially this is saying go and look across one of my machines and let me pick one of those applications. So here I'm saying next. Now I've got the five bullets across the top, and then I'll just kind of again mouse over so you're able to see. That one's adding it from a custom. Here I'm getting it from the inventory, uh, user defined, and then this one is an executable from a device. I'm going to click that. I'm going to go search for that given machine. Happens to be under my active demo machines. We're going to look at his C drive, program files, and this FileZilla client. But again, it's just so you can see the difference between using the catalog or scanned application out there. We're saying OK. It's basically populating all this information for me based upon that executable. Uh, let's call this one 2. Okay, and so now we're going to go next. 